A common statistic that is thrown around is that at least half of all new marriages will end in divorce. A researcher followed the marriages of 1,500 couples for 10 years. In that time, 800 of the couples divorced. Use the data to form a 90% confidence interval for the true rate of divorce among new marriages. Does this evidence support the idea that at least half of all new marriages end in divorce? Okay, so let's identify the phrase that's important here up front. It says that we want to form a 90% confidence interval for the true rate of divorce. So true rate is another way to say the true percentage or the true proportion. So this is a confidence interval for proportion. Okay, so at that point, we want to go ahead and start our four steps. First step is to record all the information, right? Okay, so recording the data from the problem. And we always need an N. We're going to need a P hat for this problem. P hat is X over N, right? We will then need a Q hat. From there, we can get the confidence level. Alpha and alpha over two. Okay, so let's list the N here for this problem. It says that a researcher followed the marriages of 1,500 couples for 10 years. So the N is 1,500. There were 1,500 couples followed. It says in that time, 800 of the couples divorced. And they talk about a 90% confidence level. Let's put the confidence level in. Let's come back to this 800 now. You notice that that's our confidence level. There is no other percent given in the problem directly. That means we're not going to be given P hat as a percent. We're going to have to use the X over N format for P hat which is going to be 800 divided by 1500. Okay, so that's the, um, the way that we'll form p hat in this instance. You can calculate that if you want into a decimal. Of course, that'll be 8 over 15. And if you want to know what 8 over 15 is as a decimal, just divide it. 8 divided by 15, you end up with the answer 0.53 repeating. So we're going to go ahead and say that this is 0.53 with a bar on top. Okay, from there, the next thing is to get our Q hat. Now, Q hat is just 1 minus P hat. So, um, one way you can do that is you literally do 1 minus that and get the uh, 1 minus 0.53 repeating. Or you could actually um, take that and say, well, 700 out of 1500 have to have the other trait. In other words, they do not end in divorce, right? So, the remaining 700 out of 1500, right? Because 700 and 800 add up to 1500. So the remaining 700 or 1500 did not end in divorce. And then of course, if you wanted to divide that, you can do that. 700 divided by 1500 and you get your decimal 0.46 repeating, which is what it should be given that that was 0.53 repeating. Okay, so 0.46 repeating. All right, now from there we can get alpha by the fact that the confidence level is 90%, Alpha must be 100% minus 90% or 10%, right? These two have to add up to 100. And then we take half of that alpha to get alpha divided by 2, so 0.05. Our next step in the process is to get the table value, right? Again, a large sample size here, so we're going to use Z alpha divided by 2 for these problems. And since this is a confidence level that's pretty common, one that we could find on the T-chart, we're going to go to the T-chart and look up alpha divided by 2 under the infinity row. Okay, so let's go to that chart now, the t-chart, and try to figure out our critical z value. Okay, so we're looking at the 0.05 column this time, so 0.05, and we're going to go straight down to the bottom until we see the z value that corresponds to that, so we're looking for the infinity symbol at the bottom. And there we see the result is 1.6. Four, five. So that's our critical z value, 1.645. Okay, so we found our critical z value to be 1.645. Now our next step is to get the margin of error. Remember for the proportion problems, the margin of error is z alpha divided by 2, the square root of p hat q hat over n. The z alpha divided by 2 is 1.645. That'll be times the square root of 0.53 repeating times 0.46 repeating, all of that over 1,500. Remember, that's under the square root, right? The 1,500 is under the square root along with those decimal numbers. Okay, so let's work out that and see what we get. 
Okay, so it'd be 1.645 times the square root of 0.5333333333 times 0.4666667 divided by 1500. Okay, goes up the parentheses and you end up with the decimal 0 0.0211 dot dot dot. So 0 0.0211 say eight nine six one three one dot 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 so it goes on and on and on but that's your decimal solution all right now from there what you want to do with that decimal answer is to plug it into your fourth and final step which is going to be p hat minus the error p hat plus the error so in this case that's going to be 0.53 repeating minus 0 0.0211, let's say 90, just to round it off, and 0.53 repeating plus 0 0.021190. Okay, let's see what that turns out to be ultimately in the end. We'll have 0.53 repeating minus our error and then plus our error. When you're done with that, you get 0 0.512, 0 0.512 up to 0 0.554, or 555 actually, 555 when rounded off to three decimal places. All right, and then finally our, our wording to our problem, which is going to say we are 90% confident. that the true, we'll call this the divorce rate, is between 51.2% and 55.5% for new marriages. Okay, so after looking at that statement, after writing it out, we want to answer the final question, which is, does this evidence support the idea that at least half of all new marriages end in divorce? And I think by looking at the interval numbers that we came up with, it does support that idea because these numbers, the lowest it says the divorce rate is, is 51.2% for new marriages, and uh, it says that it could be as high as 55.5%. So essentially, either scenario or any number in between those two numbers um, covers the scenario that at least half the new marriages end in divorce. So at this point, uh, we would say that this data sort of coincides with this belief.